that I should not, that I should not reign over them. And oftentimes when we see a certain man rejected or come against, so to speak, it's really not that man that the people are coming against. According to what we see right now, if the reasons are valid, so be it. But if not, like there was this morning, they are really coming against God. Because it was Samuel that God was using. It was Samuel that God was giving instruction to. And this is a sobering thought for us right now. That to reject God is the most serious thing an individual can do. To reject God. Oh no! Not me, I wasn't rejecting God. I just don't like a certain man or a woman. I don't like a, boy, a certain boy and girl. And I don't want them here and there. But what if God has put that individual there? So God is trying to tell us this morning, if it's me, okay, or whatever, but to reject people that God has put in place is to reject God. So he told me, he said, go along with it. He said, it's not you, Samuel. Don't be so uh, upset. It's me that the people have got trouble with. And it, is, and it was far worse than they expected. Then God went on, he said, according to all the words which they have done, since the day that I brought them out of Egypt, he rolled back the curtain, just a minute, of the memories. That's what we need to often do, class, when we get in a situation, let the curtain come back, as Brother says. Let the curtain be rolled back for a while, it's a good thing. He said, I'm going to pull back the curtain a minute, Samuel. He said, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit is going to pin this down. That people, for thousands of years, will read our conversation. Go with the class. According to all the words which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto day, wherewith they have forsaken me, and they served other gods, so, they, so do they also unto thee. Again, to reject God's men, which is repeated, is to reject God. Number nine, go ahead, therefore, hearken unto the voice, how be it yet protest solemnly unto them. Try to talk them out of it. Tell them what the result will be. And show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. God in his tender loving care and, he, and his mercy plainly tells them what to expect. Now they was looking at the older, fragile man, the man of God, poorly dressed, poorly shaved, with a man in his hand. But yet he had a walk with God and he had communication. They saw the man with the high crown and a purple wood. They say, he's the one with the belong. And Samuel went and got all the people together, got their leaders of every tribe, and so that so that they might have no excuse. God knows our future, and thank God, He gives us warning about it. He says, this is the manner of the king who shall reign of you. He will make your sons, this is a real close for the fact. He'll make your sons and appoint them for himself, for his chariots. What he's going to do, he's going to take your sons, he's going to turn them into slaves, and they're going to work for him from morning to night. And uh, let's go down to 14, what about the girls? He said, I'll take your daughters and I'm going to put them to work in the cafeteria, let me say. And they're going to work from daylight to dark, feed my servants and my people. And they're going to be cooks and bakers, no free time. I'll take your fields and I'll take your gardens. And he said, I'll give them to my people, the servants. He'll say, you people that don't know the word taxes, you don't know what that means. He said, let me introduce you to a new word. Start now when the king comes in, you got to start paying taxes. And that money comes to me. He said, I'll take all your animals, your boys, and your girls, number 16, and I'll put them to work 
something that had never happened before. Number 17, there's one more thing I want to tell you. you got to start paying your taxes. Take the tenth of your sheep and your servants and pay it unto the government. And it says that you'll cry out on that day because you have chosen a king over me. There'll come a day you'll, you'll regret it. You'll fall on your knees and, oh God, forgive us for doing this towards Samuel. Forgive us for not doing what you instructed us to do. Certainly, God will hear us. The line says, and number 18, and the Lord will not hear you in that day. That scares the daylight out of me, class. Right? Because whenever we pray, we want God to hear us. But a very sad thing is happening here. God permitted self-will to have its own way in the life of the people. How much happier would they have been if they had to follow the things of God? As always, as always, God told them, I'm going to give you a king, but you got to wait to my time. Certainly the people's not going to think, they say, forget we even asked for it. Just forget it. Number 19, nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, and they said, no, nay, but we will have a king over us. Whenever the child of God wants the flesh's way instead of the spirit's way and what God has ordained, let us not expect nothing but spiritual poverty and loss of liberty in our Christian life. to end like that when I say class. Got to obey God. And we're having this all kind of things going on in the government around us as of this morning. We've got to obey the word of God. But still, you know, listen to the government. Father, we thank you for your word, Heavenly Father, and your instructions. God, touch each one of our minds and our hearts this morning. Say someone this morning, Father, we thank you for being in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen.